All right, we've got our case uh, out of the box now. And as you can see, you can see the Antec logo barely showing up down here. I don't know if they're afraid to put their name on this case and not make it too visible, but uh, this is a pretty basic case. I mean, this is kind of what you expect for the $20 we spent. Um, got a couple of uh, areas up here where you can actually insert your drives. Uh, floppy disk if you want that, or you could put a card reader here. Um, but other than that, it's pretty simple. Power button, reset button, a couple of USB ports. These are not USB 3.0, just the basic stuff. Um, you got a uh, couple of uh, uh, slots there for a microphone and a headset, and that's pretty much it. And over here, we pretty much just got some basic ventilation around the back. We can actually show you that um, you got your uh, slot where your uh, motherboard's gonna go for your input output shield. And up here at the top is where your power supply mounts and we're gonna go ahead and mount that now. Get that out of the box. All right, we'll see that out of the box from the power supply, we basically have our cable. We have four screws that came in a little bag. To mount those in, we have our instructions. Uh, looks like our warranty. We can throw those away. We don't, you know, what we do with those. Um, stuff's pretty simple. Nothing you're probably going to need a whole lot of directions. And of course, our power supply. Nice big fan on it. Uh, cords all um, tied up. We're going to go ahead and leave those tied up for now. We're going to go ahead and get the side uh, panel off this case. Now, for this uh, build, I recommend having at least one good Phillips screwdriver. Um, probably a number one Phillips is what I use. Um, I got a basic, regular uh, Craftsman uh, Phillips screwdriver here. And then I've also got this one I bought off Amazon. I highly recommend it. Um, it is a Vaco. Um, it's on Amazon. I can put a link to it in the description if anybody wants. Um, but I like this one. It's about $14. It's magnetized and definitely helps when you're putting in motherboards or taking out motherboards uh, because it'll hold those screws uh, without dropping them down. And so that's a very good investment on that. So most of uh, this is pretty standard case. Uh, we're going to have two screws here that are going to need to come out. We'll go ahead and take those off and then the side panel will just come back about a half inch and then just pull right off. Get the bottom one. And then like I say for this, we're just gonna simply take this and you're just gonna pull it back. This is pretty standard, about 90% of the cases how they go. You just pull it back about a half inch and then it just falls off. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a safe spot so it doesn't get all scratched up. Take a look in here. Let's see, we got our, down here, we got our instructions um, and screws. They come with a case. Um, inside we have our cables coming from the front of the unit, the power switch, um, mic, etc. cetera. Uh, this case has one fan. So like I say, pretty standard stuff. On this case, you do have options on this case to put additional fans um, such as up here in the front um, to help disperse the heat. We're going to go ahead and put these to the side though and we're going to go ahead and mount our power supply here. Power supply is going to mount in the top of the unit. One thing you'll want to look for is you'll want to get your power supply out. You'll want to look First of all, the fan is probably gonna to go towards the bottom. You know that, it's not gonna face up towards the top of the metal. And then what you're gonna look at here is right here on the back of the unit where it goes towards the back, you're gonna see that your, uh, I don't know if you can see this, your screw holes are kind of off squared. You have two here and then these two are not lined up. Um, so you're gonna look for how that actual uh, goes in the back, it can only go in one way. So, if we look here on the back of the unit, get this camera where you can see it here. 
you'll see that same thing up here where those uh, holes match up. That is how you'll want to power supply will come in from the inside obviously. Get it in like that and you'll see that just like that is how it mounts up. So we'll go ahead and put those screw holes in there. When you put these screw holes in you'll want to put one in and then you'll want to go to the opposite corner and then work up and then work to the opposite corner again. Make sure you don't tighten one all the way snug until you get until you get um, all of them tightened up. So you'll just want to put those screws in um, about halfway just to hold them and then once you get them all in and started you'll want to go ahead and tighten them all up. Opposite corner. And this right here is why you want to make sure you don't tighten them up because you'll need this wiggle room here to line up the other two holes. If I had girded the first one down as tight as possible, um, I wouldn't have been able to have that free freedom of movement to line up the last two holes. Now we'll go ahead and tighten it. <laughs> Son's over there watching YouTube videos. All right, now with that power supply in, we're gonna go ahead and get our motherboard ready to put in. We're gonna go ahead and wanna place this uh, case flat down is the easiest way, just like this. And we'll try to get the camera so I can halfway see what, what we're doing here. So motherboard's gonna go right in here. We're gonna go ahead and get these cords out of the way and get that ready. Now that we've got our power supply in, we've got our tower uh, laying on its side, ready to insert the motherboard inside. We're gonna wanna go ahead and prepare the motherboard um, to get it ready for um, placement. Let me go ahead and pull it out. Manual, you know what we do with that. Actually, you wanna keep this manual handy. Um, you may need it to line up some of your uh, cables. So, here we see that it has an electrostatic discharge bag. You'll want to make sure that you are making sure you're safe with your electrostatic, especially when handling the motherboard. You can always touch the, your case to ground yourself out so that you're not, uh, you, you know, static electricity isn't damaging any of your components on your motherboard. So you'll want to be careful of that. Uh, a lot of people recommend using a uh, wrist strap, uh, ESC uh, wrist strap. And I actually have one of those, but I never use it to be honest with you. Um, motherboard comes with a couple of SATA cables. Um, and you're gonna wanna look for your driver CD. I like to get the newest drivers right from the website, but you may actually choose to use those. Um, and then our IO shield. Every motherboard should come with an IO shield. If your motherboard doesn't have an IO shield, uh, you'll definitely want to contact whoever you purchase it from. Make sure you get the IO shield because every IO shield is different uh, for each motherboard. And there's no such thing as just a standard IO shield. So we'll put this away for the moment. Um, make sure you're safe uh, touching your case every few seconds as you take out your motherboard. Try to handle it only by the edges the best you can. I like to work right on top of the 
um, right on top of the electrostatic uh, bag that it comes in. And it's a lot easier to go ahead and put our CPU in here and our memory uh, before you actually insert the motherboard into the computer. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now we're not gonna be overclocking this budget build. Um, should be fine with just the standard, um, so I can cut this here. Should be fine with just the standard stock fan that the CPU comes with. Every CPU new should come with a stock fan. And you'll see that both Intel and AMD, they basically say they don't warranty their uh, CPU if you use anything but the CPU that they come with. But if you are gonna overclock your CPU, you'll probably wanna check out some of the um, better options for cooling. Um, CPU chip is right here. Has a nice sticker for it for your uh, tower. If you wanna show it off, and then the bigger part of the box is going to be your stock heat sink and fan. So I can get that out. All right. So the first step you wanna look for on your CPU is you'll wanna look for, um, all of them have a little gold arrow and you'll see that this one is right down here. You'll wanna line that up on your motherboard with the arrow on the motherboard. And you'll actually see that that arrow, I don't know if this camera can focus in on that with the light here, but it's right there in that corner. So wanna make sure we line that up um, just as it shows you on the motherboard. Every motherboard should show you how they line up. And if you've purchased the right um, socket for the CPU that's going to work with your motherboard, it should fit. Make sure you never force these things. Again, on the CPU, you'll want to try to make sure you handle it only, only on the sides. Make sure you don't touch these pins uh, on the bottom. And you'll never want to use too much force or you can bend these little pins um, and mess up your CPU. So we're going to go ahead and line up that gold arrow with exactly how it's indicated here. But before we can actually place this in, we are going to want to zoom in a little bit for you here. Okay. Before we actually put that CPU in, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and raise this metal bar here. And this is actually gonna open up the holes in the CPU socket. So you're usually just gonna push down or pull it out. And once you do that, it will raise up. And once you raise it up, that's actually what opens those holes so your CPU pins can go down in there. Make sure you've got your CPU, um, CPU chip lined up correctly with those arrows. And once you do that, it should just kind of move it around just a little bit until it lines up and it'll drop right in. If you can see that, once you line those holes up, you may have to move it around just a little bit until you can feel it drop in, just like that. And then you'll want to go ahead and tighten it onto those pins by lowering your lever and make sure it's right under the holder. So it's right under that clip there. Just so you can see how that works. This actually pulls out and up to loosen it. And then to tighten it, you'll just right under that. 